Well, maybe you've been married a long time and you've gone through the trials, you've been through the valleys, the peaks, and you recognize the importance of sticking through it. Or maybe you've gone through a divorce situation, or maybe your marriage is in a difficult situation right now and you're not sure which way it's going to go. Dave and Tracy Sellers are joining us from Vows to Keep Marriage Ministries, Vows to Keep.com. And today we're going to talk about turning setbacks into comebacks, not allowing those marriage setbacks to end things, but to see how God can use those to restore. Yeah, we, we work with a lot of couples that are really truly at a low point, sometimes the lowest point they've mm -hmm. ever been at in their marriage. And it's not uncommon for Christians that are in that situation to say, I mean, I'm a Christian, I, I desire to serve the Lord. My wife is a Christian. She, why are we going through such hard times? This just doesn't even make sense to me. But I think we can look at the Old Testament and the New Testament alike and see that sin isn't the only reason that we go through hard times. Sometimes things happen to us um, and, and they're, they're very, very challenging. There's a knowledge that every Christian has to have. Just by virtue of the fact that we're a Christian, we have a desire to serve the Lord, we have a bullseye on our back, so mm -hmm. to speak. Um, we love, though, to share how God takes a lot of these setbacks that are in our lives and show how he can turn them into comebacks. And we're gonna talk in just a little bit that sometimes the setbacks come because of a mistake that we've personally made mm -hmm. or a sin that we've committed. But what happens when you're just kind of going along in life, you're trying to do things right, and let's say you have a really significant physical setback, you know, you're in the hospital for mm -hmm. a while and now you've depleted your financial resources. Now what do you mm -hmm. do? That's a major setback for people. Maybe they've lost a child before it was born. You know, we've experienced that kind of a setback. I have friends who have children who have walked away from the Lord, even though they've been raised in a godly home. Those are major setbacks. Those are attacks on marriages. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, suddenly your whole world's collapsing mm. around you. I think there's a lot of times on marriage where it's not something that's completely outside of our control. Um, sin creeps in, and it's hard for us to come to grips with that, but a man being unfaithful to his wife, for example, maybe he's, he's addicted to pornography and she doesn't know yet, but he knows it's inevitably gonna find him out. Um, maybe you've been un, un, um, unfaithful with your finances. You've got credit card debt that's piling up and you're not talking with your spouse about this, but you know you're, you're essentially putting all of your finances in, in jeopardy. You could lose your house. And there's, there's people that are all the time basically dodging the bullet with what's about to come toward them. And I think it's important that we all recognize that we're in the same boat. It might not necessarily be, um, your particular sin might not be what I just talked about, but we all are sinners. We all fall short. The cool thing though is that we have a savior. And when we pursue him, it's not that we, the consequences of our actions go away, but we know we can have ultimate victory when we're faithful to pursue what he calls of us. It sounds like you're saying that it doesn't matter what has happened in your marriage. All is not lost. There is still hope. That's absolutely right. Absolutely right. And I think it's important when we are in these situations that we really do consider the fact that um, we have an enemy and Satan leverages those hard times in very, very powerful ways. He knows what is going to trip us up <laughs> and he lays those temptations before us and that can give us a setback. But God can turn that around and we also have to remember that God gives us a way out of those temptations when Satan tries to trip us. There is always a way out. God's word promises that. There's going to be times where it looks like you have a setback and it's easy to give up and just say, okay, we're done. But that's when we need to turn to scripture and we can look at scriptures like Luke chapter 5. It's an incident from Peter's life. He's a professional fisherman, right? He's out in the water fishing all night. He's probably got the best boat, the best nets. He knows right where to fish. Well, he had a very unsuccessful night. He caught nothing. Mm -hmm. And he was probably thinking, what in the world just happened? And we can have that same thought. What in the world just happened in our relationship? I thought everything was going pretty good. Well, he goes back to shore and that's where Jesus is. And Jesus approaches him and says, can I use your boat as, an, as a place to preach from? I'm going to launch a little way out and I'm going to preach from the shore. And, Peter's not tied up with this previous night's catch. So God's kind of setting him up for part of an eternal story here. He just doesn't know it yet. So Jesus gets on the boat. He preaches to the crowd. And when he's done, he says to Peter, okay, now let's launch out into deep water and let down your nets. And I can see Peter's heart a little bit here because he says, you know, master, we've just got done fishing all night. 
So he's kind of like got a little bit of excuse, but then he says some very key words. He says, because you say so, because mm. you say so, I'm going to obey you. And that is so key because it's easy to go by our own feelings and say, look what I just did. I've tried so hard. I've tried everything and I got nothing from it. But Jesus says, go ahead and do it my way. Obey what I'm asking you to do from scripture. You know, we know exactly what he's asking because we have God's word. We can read it. We can obey it. And he can turn a whole situation around, and it can be amazing. Life gets really hard when really? we're in these sort of situations, <laughs> right? It's, yes, we it's, all know. Yes, yeah, it, it we, is. We've yeah. all been there at times <laughs> where we are in the middle of a setback, mm -hmm. and it's tempting to want to give up. And I think that's a, a natural tendency that we all have. But I, it's at these points that the next decision we make is very critical because we can actually take a situation that's kind of happening to us. And by having an unbiblical response to that, we can make it a whole lot worse. Mm -hmm. I think you are really hitting on something so important. The, how we respond is so critical. Mm -hmm. I have friends who have chosen the divorce route mm -hmm. because of how mm -hmm. something that happened. And that point, that's the path they take, and I've watched so many mm -hmm. downward spirals, and I know that there's so many divorce situations, and I'm not here to put any of you down from what you've gone through, but if you are still in your marriage, I encourage you to take those moments and say, I'm not, I'm not going to take that bait and say, this is it. I'm going to push through these hard times, because that, you got a decision point. Yeah, God absolutely. is on that other difficult path, wants to walk through it. Well, and I think we can learn a lot by looking at these two fishing um, expeditions, if you will, right? There's two of them that happen in this story. Mm -hmm. There's three really critical principles that we can learn um, and apply to our marriage when it's in a time that seems impossible, that, you know, we've put our best foot forward, we, we had our best nets, we have our best boat, and we come up empty-handed. Mm -hmm. So those three principles are basically we need to invite Jesus into our situation, we need to be submissive to God's plan. And then we need to know that God is going to reward those people that are faithful to them. So let me just unpack this just a little bit. Because I think that anyone who's in marriage um, who sees and applies these principles can be successful. So that first part is, is making sure that we're getting Jesus in the boat with us. Hmm. That is the most critical thing you can do in your life. Is you need to, of course, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But then... Bring him into your life. Mm. Have him in your boat. For, for Peter, this boat represents his livelihood. I mean, this is his life. And, and by inviting Jesus into that, uh, he's saying, you can have it. You can use what, what's in my life. And I think we have to realize that our marriage is actually a vessel as well for God to use. It needs to be. The second principle in order to have a successful marriage, in order to make that comeback, is, like David said, to be submissive to God's direction in our life. Not just to have him in our boat or on our path with us, like you said, but to actually say, what do you want from me and how can I respond to that? It's that response yet again. Having God's presence with us is one thing, but saying yes to his ways is totally different. It's in those little decisions too. It's in the big one, I'm not going to give up, but then it's in those daily ones. And behind your closed doors at home, how are you going to treat one another? How are you going to follow the Ten Commandments in your marriage? How are you going mm -hmm. to apply the fruit of the Spirit in this tough situation today? And when we do that, like David said, there's going to be such a great reward. We can't let our own experience be a stronger guide than our Savior, a stronger guide yeah. than God's Word. The third principle, very quickly, is something that's easy to miss in Luke 5, verse 5. It says, basically, because you say so. Uh, Peter didn't go out fishing that second time um, knowing that his skills would be any better. He did it because he knew that God would be faithful to him. God, Jesus didn't even say to him, hey, you cast your nets out this time. We're going we're gonna to bring yeah. it in. Peter basically knew that obedience was going to yield a re result, even though the result hadn't been said verbally to him. When we are faithful, God is faithful as well. Yeah. And I think if you keep reading in Luke 5, we see that God's so faithful that literally they're ready to sink a boat. And out of that comes an abundance that is so great they have to bring in a second boat. What a way to live, right? That is how God will bless our marriages in our faithfulness to him. 
wanna remind you that not only is this great information just coming from a great couple who's gone through things and is putting God first in their marriage, but they also do have a marriage ministry. Vows2Keep.com is where you can find more information about their emergency counseling services, other opportunities and uh, services that they have available. And of course, you can also hear more from David and Tracy Sellers at WTTP Radio and on Shine FM Radio, Vows2Keep.com. Invite Jesus into your marriage, be submissive to God's direction, and yes, God, because you say so, we will move forward, desiring to make sure that those setbacks are just opportunities to make our marriage stronger. Take some time to pray for those you know who are married, young couples, individuals who are in a difficult point. Satan's attacking families, but God is still stronger, and together we can rise up and be a support for marriage in our country.